Great to be back. Thank you for having us, Tim. Uh, happy to be here and, and excited to talk to you about what we're go what's going on at Split and the industry. I'll try and be fast uh, and we can jump into some Q&A and, and finish on, on time, which would be great on a Friday for you all and a Thursday evening here in San Francisco. What's been happening? Uh, I'm going to talk to you about three things today. Our differentiation in the market, a recap of our H1 results, uh, and also touch on some wins and progress in Q3. And also our outlook, how we're feeling about the outlook. Then we can jump into Q&A. We've just been through the disclaimer. Just a quick recap of, the, of what we're seeing, uh, really, which has really been Q1 and Q2 has been a springboard for growth for us. We saw a record quarter in Q2, uh, phenomenal growth that uh, was planned as part of our new strategy, and we've really seen that really take up. We've seen accelerating customer growth with both merchants and consumer growth really starting to accelerate on the back of this strategy. Partnerships have been crucial. We've spoken a few times now about our partnerships with Visa, MasterCard and Stripe, amongst many others, including Shopify, Magento, BlueSnap. These are critical uh, to distributing our product and really expend, ex extending our offering. I'll talk about that shortly. Finally, we have a very strong balance sheet, which is going to fuel the next wave of growth. We wanted to be sure that we had a great, uh, the product fit was fantastic. We wanted to be sure that it was resonating well in the market and we could grow. And we've ticked all those boxes and more, uh, recently we raised uh, $100 million through an institutional investment uh, placement and through SBP shortly, uh, which means that we're, we're well positioned now to invest significantly in growth, which will continue to drive us through that uh, uh, the new inflection point that we're starting to hit. Moving ahead, let's talk about our differentiation. Uh, there's been a lot of questions lately with PayPal's entry into the space and uh, how does that impact us? How does that impact others? And how do we view that? So let me just take a step back and talk about the, the problem or the opportunity, the challenge that we're, we're, we're facing uh, on behalf of our customers. We are tackling the challenge of conversion. Retailers' single largest problem is that nearly 70% of consumers will abandon the shopping cart page in an e-commerce environment. The number one driver for that abandonment is price. It provides a significant price, especially a higher price, higher average order value, creates significant cognitive load on the consumer, will lead them to pause. They will leave intending to come back, and many, if not all, never do. It costs the merchants a lot more money to retarget them through marketing, um, or they've just lost them forever. This translates to $4.6 trillion in lost sales to merchants. We, we exist to help them solve that problem. We do so by offering shoppers flexibility, control, and most importantly, close to zero friction by enabling them to use their existing credit to buy more transactions with confidence without going into further debt. Moving on to the next slide. How do we do that? We essentially do that by helping people responsibly enrich their lives by leveraging the credit they have on their terms. Said another way, we allow consumers to make the purchases they need and they want by using a credit card and, and without going into further debt by a new financing of a transaction. It's installment payments, it's buy now, pay later. That's how we do that and we differentiate by using your existing card. Why is that important? If we move to the next slide, it's very important because we are differentiated from the, the entire market. You can see here, majority of our, of our peers in the space do a fantastic job of providing a solution to consumers who need financing. They may have a credit card without the balance available and they, or they choose not to use their existing credit card. PayPal's new offering is providing new credit to consumers to finance the transaction as well. Our customers tell us that we are complementary to all of these offerings. You will see wherever there is a uh, split it, you will see probably a firm. You may see some of the other brands there in the higher average order space, average order value space where we operate. We serve an average, higher average order value. We're currently $900, close to $1,000. As I said, our customers tell us we're complementary. And now by our customers, I mean our merchants. So that we'll have one of these brands and split it there. We serve anybody with a credit card. These other brands serve somebody that need financing um, at the point of sale. And we both do a great job servicing those two different customers. Moving to the next slide. Let's talk about the growth that we've seen in H1. And we've spoken about this a lot, so I'll, I'll try to move very quickly. 
another record half uh, was reported with Q2 driving most of that growth as our strategy really started to kick in. We, with the pandemic really being a, a catalyst, there's more volume shifted online and there was a greater need for buy now, pay later tools. In Q3, we've seen tr uh, continued terrific traction uh, as evidenced here with some major brands being added. Specialized, one of the largest bicycle brands in the world, joining our stable bicycles uh, with a number of other brands that we have in place. Specialized, the, the latest to join and arguably one of the largest. Echelon, one of the largest uh, home fitness, similar to Peloton, very different, great product. Uh, they will be launching very quickly. Braun, uh, Frederic Constant, one of the larger watch brands in the world. Silent Night, for those of you that are familiar with the UK, one of the largest um, home mattress and, and bedding brands. Um, and, and 77 Diamonds and Waves taking us into new verticals, whether it's uh, luxury accessories or moving into software as well. So we're seeing uh, brands that people know, use and love increasingly adding Splitter. Moving ahead. By the numbers, uh, essentially we're seeing strong growth across all metrics. We're constructively dissatisfied. This is good. We can be growing much faster. We're very small. We're just getting started. I expect these numbers to continue to grow in time as we continue to deliver on our strategy. This has been one great quarter growth. We have many more to come as we continue to execute. The great thing about a payments business is the more we're accepted, the more consumers know and use and love us, the more this will grow. We move ahead. I touched on the brands and in the interest of time, let's move to the next slide. Quick update in our partnerships. I know we're often asked questions here. Our, disc our work with Visa and MasterCard is going incredibly well. Uh, I can't disclose too much yet other than saying we're working with them very closely on different items um, as outlined in the partnership. Uh, we're very happy with the progress that we're seeing there. Uh, we you may have seen MasterCard recently highlighted Split It um, as a critical partner of theirs um, and someone uniquely servicing uh, people through card-based installments. Again, really showing that we're complementary and different to everybody else. Our Stripe, partner, our Stripe integration is complete. We're currently in beta testing for seamless onboarding. This will allow any merchant to, be ex to accept installment payments from anybody with a credit card within minutes. Currently takes us weeks, if not months, to onboard some customers. We'll bring this down to minutes. You should be an online seamless setup, which will really start to provide significant benefit to consumers. We expect that to roll out in Q4 um, in a much broader effort after we've seen um, the results from our beta, which is currently in market. And to wrap up with our final slide, we're really at the beginning. I think if you take away one thing from this presentation is we're at the very beginning of an inflection point. Uh, you'll expect, continue to look for large merchants accepting split it. Uh, continue to look for evidence of consumers being aware and consumers actually loving us. The best product will win and we build, and our, our MPS and usage shows that we have the best product there is winning. Um, and we'll continue to build foundations to support that growth. We're uniquely positioned, we're complementary to others and we're just getting started and we believe the future is very bright. Uh, happy to take any questions with the time we have. Thanks Brad. Thanks for that very succinct presentation. Obviously, uh, Many questions coming through. There's a bit of a theme running here. Firstly, can you talk about um, PayPal and the banks entering the buy now, pay later se sector? I think everybody's entering the sector, aren't they? I think it's a pretty attractive sector. Every, somebody has some form of product or not. As I said earlier, I think we're, we're very excited PayPal's joined. We're complimentary to them. So wherever you see PayPal accepted, you should see Splitter. They're financing the transaction with new finance, new debt. We're helping people with their existing credit card. Um, I, I've got a lot of friends over there. And as I said to them, uh, uh, thank you for helping us build awareness of the category. This is gonna be fantastic. So having a brand such as PayPal in the industry. And, and well, I think we're a partner to banks. We allow any bank's credit card instrument to be used through Splitter. So uh, we work very closely with that industry through Visa and MasterCard. And um, credit card uh, numbers seem to be deteriorating. Does that have an impact? Um, does that worry you? In Australia, it's declining slightly. I think the num uh, in the US, it's not. In the US, it's growing. It was nearly 10% growth in the US and in the UK, it was similar. The numbers are somewhat you need to look at for us. You look at e-commerce and credit card use on e-commerce is still very healthy and it is growing. Recently, you'll see sh uh, shifts in spend saying that it's actually declining even further. But remember, people aren't spending on travel or entertainment. So that's going to look a lot worse. So they're shifting their spend to e-commerce, but they're not spending as much on their card as what they would have before. 
we're, we're not worried. We think the TAM is growing, uh, the addressable opportunity is growing and people, love, people that use their credit cards continue to do so. This question here on um, how's the company progressing in terms of getting a, a longer term funding facility? Good, nothing to report as yet. We're, we're, we're well financed in terms of a, a debt facility that we advance funds to merchants with a $70 million in facilities and we, can ex we have options to expand those as we need to. We continue to work on larger and longer term facilities and that's going well. And, and what's, what's in it for the, um, if you could break it down a little bit, your partners, MasterCard, Visa, et cetera, but what's in it for them? Is it the actual conversion of the transaction at the cart? Is that, is that where they're, they're happy to position themselves with Splitter? It would be unfair of me to speak on their behalf, uh, but I think what I can safely say is a, a transaction through Split It is a transaction on a Visa or a MasterCard. And right, okay. The more they're accepted, the more card transactions on instalments there are. Understood. Um, now, the question here is around um, marketing. Um, what are the plans to market this product more to the consumer so there's greater understanding of it? Obviously, the likes of Afterpay um, uh, are well progressed in their marketing. Uh, firstly, I'll acknowledge we can do a lot more. We've been building out our marketing team in the last six months, and I think the, the recent capital raise, uh, a large part of that was for us to invest a lot more in marketing and, and sales. Expect to see a lot more. I will acknowledge that I think investors in Australia won't see that as much. Uh, given that a lot of that money will probably go into the US first and then the UK. We do plan to invest a lot more in Australia uh, as we begin to understand and, and see traction in that market. Uh, I will make sure that we include examples of that, of that in future updates, but expect to see a lot more from us. And uh, another question here, Brad, around Asia. Where, where do you see yourself positioned in Asia? At the moment, we have some good partnerships that stalled during COVID. I think we have a good foundation there. I think there's absolutely a need for a product such as ours. Uh, we, we're lucky to have a number of folks who have spent a lot of time in Asia. I spent over 12 years in Singapore uh, at PayPal and Intuit and Visa. So we're very excited and interested about that space. We have some work to do to drive more traction there. And, and do you have any thoughts on the, the regulatory space, given the, you know, that the sector um, has some issues in terms of the other companies in, that, in this space around fees? Mm -hmm. um, do you have any, you know, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure, I believe that there should be a level playing field. If you're issuing credit to consumers, you should operate in the same level playing field as everybody else does. Okay, and call it different things, but I think there should be. I also believe that uh, our regulators should not try and over-regulate it, should we should keep it very simple. Uh, but everybody should operate by a level playing field. If you're, what's in the best interest of the consumer, well, we'll always lean into that. But also what's in the best interest of, of enabling business, uh, small businesses, emerging businesses, and even Australian businesses to compete online is not too much regulation. So a level playing field, but don't go over the top. 